Hi folks, Speedway Tag here with another game review. I'm doing Antinomy from Button Shy, so another Button Shy game. Uh, as, as you know, Button Shy games are these wonderful little wallet games. The games come in uh, wallets like this, and they often just have 18 cards in them, which still pack a lot of punch, a lot of game. They, they manage to, to um, squeeze into 18 cards. Uh, sometimes you have to come up with a few counters to track things or a dice from time to time, but but the, the 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 entirety of the game usually is encapsulated by the eighteen cards that comes with the game, and I think it's always a um, uh, it's just brilliant when it comes to the design of these things because I'm often <laughs> I'm still in awe of the way they can produce games with such such um, minimal components, um, and Antinomy is um, no exception. Uh, again, not one that's spoken of often, but it's my second or third favorite Button Shy games. As you can see over there, I got a ton, well, not a ton, but a lot. Um, Banned Books is my favorite. Just did a review on that. Antinomy is probably my second or third favorite. Um, this game is um, first and foremost for two players, but the solo expansion, which I'm going to show you and discuss today, um, called the Solar Flare Expansion. It looks like that, Antinomy Solo Flare Expansion by Mike Mullins. Uh, the game is by John Bellucci. And you know what, just between you and me and everyone else listening on the internet, um, I like this game solo better than a competitive two-player game. And I'll just go through some of the reasons why as, we're, as I'm showing you how the game plays. It's, but in a nutshell, uh, playing it solo is such a great puzzle um, and, and so many things to consider, so many different strategies to consider. You almost don't want people messing with it. <laughs> you, want, you, you want to be left alone to work it out to yourself. Um, and when you play two players, you have someone else sort of messing with your plans. And that's okay for a lot of games. We accept that as two player games, of course. But for this one, I don't like it being messed with. So I like it solo. Uh, the theme of this game is that you are a sorcerer, and here's your staff card here. So um, I've got this staff. So from now on, I'm talking solo version of this game, okay? I've got my staff. I'm a sorcerer. I have discovered the space-time... Um, the space-time what? Continuum, okay? Great Scrabble word with the double U's there. Um, space-time continuum. I've discovered it. And it's represented uh, by this line of cards there. Um, and in within this space-time continuum is um, a, a whole heap of magical relics, uh, which you've uh, managed to discover as you've broken into this continuum. And as a sorcerer, of course, you've realized that um, these relics, the rings, the skulls, the feathers, and the keys over there, they have special powers, so if you can break into the space-time continuum and drain the relics of powers, you get these um, paradox crystals, and that makes you a better sorcerer, all right, for spell casting in the future. So, okay, so that's the idea. We're, we're sort of delving into this space-time continuum, um, getting relics, um, getting crystals all to improve our spell casting in the future nice theme and it feels good especially when you see this line in front of you it feels like you know you can you can convince yourself that that's the space-time continuum you set it up set up the game by giving you yourself three cards uh, a nine card a continuum there and a paradox card uh, with the four colors on it and the and the color that the counter uh, is on um, is significant, as we'll see in a minute. Um, there's also a small deck of uh, nine cards there. There's a bit more than 18 cards here because I've added the six cards from the Solo Flare expansion. So there's a deck there of nine cards and also in the two-player game, the other person, other sorcerer, obviously has a, has a staff as well. But in the one-player game, in the solo game, that's just used there to house those three tokens and they'll, that'll become apparent in a minute. So, how does a turn go? And what are you trying to do? You are trying to get uh, a combination of, of three cards in your hand, which will allow you to get what's called a paradox. 
And being able to do that allows you to get one of those um, paradox crystals. You get all five. In other words, you do five paradoxes for the game, you're going to win the game. Okay? So how do you get a paradox? Well, the way a turn works is very, very ingenious, I find. Okay, so we want to get the, 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 the three different kinds of combinations into our hand. So how do we manipulate the cards into our hands? Okay, so first of all, we've got to understand what we're going for. We want a hand of all of the same color, all of the same number, or all of the same symbol. Easy to remember, okay? So how do, at the moment, I've got two greens. If I can get another green somewhere, um, you know, that might work. So I'll just sort of fiddle with this a little bit so, so I can show you how that might work, okay? Just pretend, pretend it started off like that, okay? All right, so if I, I think, okay. Uh, look, I've also got two rings, haven't I? Can you see that? I've got two rings as well. So I could go for Paradox um, by getting a third ring or by getting a third green card, okay? And remember, three of the same number will also do the same trick. But, all right, so this is now where you, you look at the space-time continuum and you look at your possible moves and see how you can program forward to get the cards you need. For example, okay, this is how you move. If you play a card um, and you want to move forward in the space-time continuum, so to the right, that's where the numbers come in. So if I played this card and I wanted to move forward, I'd only look at the number, right? And I'd move my, my staff forward three positions, and I'd take the card that I ended on and replace it with the card that I used, okay? That's the standard thing. So I'd, for this one, Moving forward, you only go by numbers, so I'd move forward three, take the card that I ended on, and replace it with the card that I used to move. Okay, if I want to move this way, backwards, left, um, then the way that works is I can move backwards to uh, a card of the same color I have. So if I wanted to get that red um, skull relic, I could move backwards to it by playing a red card, and then I could go back to any red card in that direction or I could use the symbol right if I played this this ring that allows me to go back this way to any ring so any matching symbol so I could go all the way back and get that ring okay so moving backwards you move by uh, color and and um, symbol moving forward you move by numbers okay but so you've probably already worked out here that there's a paradox waiting for me because if I play this card and move this one, two, three and take this green skull relic, replace it with the one I moved with, well, bam, all of a sudden I've got three greens and I've got a paradox, okay? So I've got one of those crystals. I'll show you now, there's a little bit more to do. One thing to keep in mind, okay? Whenever you get a paradox, this little token is going to move around this track. And whatever color it's on, you cannot use cards of that color to make paradoxes. So that's a nice little spanner in the works. So see how it's on the purple at the moment? I couldn't have a purple card in my hand and claim a paradox. That's not going to work. So, but I'm okay because I've got greens. So, I've got a paradox. I'm declaring it. So the way um, this works now... The way I collect that 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 uh, crystal that I need, uh, I discard one of these cards. So maybe I might discard the skull. Okay, take a card from from the top of the deck, shuffle it up, shuffle the three up, and then insert these three cards either to the right or the left of my staff. Now there's no three to that side, so I'll have to insert them here. And see, that's how I get my three new cards to start again. I get those three, and these get inserted, sorry, these get inserted into the space-time continuum. So you do that every time you get a paradox. You will discard one card, take one from the deck, and put the three back in randomly, and take the three that you replaced as your new hand. So now I've got a pur two purple feather, two blue ring, and a four red feather. 
okay? The relics that have gone back into the continuum were the ones in my hand plus something from that deck. Okay, so here's our first card from the expansion. It's called a Solar Flare. And this is really creepy and nice and annoying and, and does throw a spanner in the works also. Uh, a Solar Flare, as you can see, it's white. There's no color to it. Um, it basically just occupies a position in the continuum that you cannot use. It takes away a, a, a spot. And so it's something you need to get rid of quickly because it reduces your options because you can't use it and you can't put a card in there until it's gone, right? And the way to get rid of it is when a card comes out from the deck and it has a, a one or a three on it, you can replace it and get rid of the flare. So that's the only way you can get rid of the flare. So at the moment, that's annoying because it's taking up space. Uh, I've only got eight cards to work with now instead of nine. Okay. So I got a paradox on my first turn, okay? So what about if I didn't get a paradox on a turn? For example, um, I might, um, so I got a paradox here, so I've got to move this down. So now I can't use red cards, okay? So I've got a red here. Um, so that's not gonna be of any use to me because the codex says, oh, that's called the codex, by the way. It's saying no reds for me, right? So. What happens if I don't form a paradox on my turn? Okay, so that's where those three little counters come in, right? So let, I'll demonstrate that. So let's say I play this uh, purple feather. Now remember, I'm going to use it as a color to go backwards this way. So I play it. I can go back to any purple card. So I go along the continuum like this to this purple card. I take that into my hand. And I replace it with the card I used to move. Okay, right. And put my staff under where I ended up. Did I form a paradox? No. So one of these counters comes off. Okay. And every, every turn I don't form a paradox, one of those counters come off. When a third counter comes off, what happens is I take the top card from, from here. Uh, so let's say I've, I've, I haven't formed a paradox for three turns. All three are off. I would take the top card here. Oh, it's another solar flare. All right. So I have to now replace something on the continuum with this card. So a two or a four. So I might um, get knock off that four and have to put it there. Again, very annoying because now there's two spots on my continuum that I can't use. Uh, if another card, there are other cards in this deck. Okay, there's other color relics like that there's also what's called um, depleted relics and you can only use these as their number and their symbol but there's no color so you can't use them for paradoxes they're just used to to move uh, one or back to a key okay so these are depleted relics there's like four of these in the deck there's uh, three more real relics and there's two solar flares in there okay and the idea of that deck is it's also your timer for the game, okay? So um, if you keep having turns too often without, you know, moving along and getting your paradox, I should have taken a crystal when I got that first paradox. If you keep taking turns too often without managing to get a paradox and moving along in your, in your target for the game, your win condition, this deck is continually going to be coming, a card will be coming into the continuum. And as you can imagine, the deck will deplete pretty quickly because there's only nine cards in there. So you effectively can, you know, is that nine turns? Maybe a little bit more with the paradoxes as well. But once that deck is uh, uh, is um, depleted, um, I will double check that. Game end, um, if, yes, when the deck is empty. So that's your timer. Okay, so every time you um, you don't form a paradox with your hand of three, a counter will come off the card. When it gets to three counters off the card, you put another card from the deck into the continuum and your timer keeps ticking, okay? But when you do that, you replace the three tokens. So again, you've got another three turns before you have to uh, put another card in. So yeah, that, that's a lot more turns than nine, obviously, isn't it? So I might have another turn here. What have I got going? The codex says I can't use red to form a paradox, so this is annoying me that it's in my hand. Um, I've got two rings, 
Um, and I'm wondering, okay, this is where you have to start planning ahead. One move is not going to get you the card you want. Okay, well, I don't think it is. Um, let's see, if I played this for the four, this would move me up one, two, three, four, up to this key. So let's do that. I'll play the red and get the key like this. Okay, and, and move me up four, one, two, three, four, where I just moved. And so you just keep moving around like that. This is you, the sorcerer, and his staff moving up and down the continuum trying to get the job done. Okay. Um, the, boy, look at this. Like if, if, I, if red was not the color that um, I'm not allowed to use, I could play this as a two to move this way. I'd get my third ring, and that would be another paradox, right? But unfortunately, red is, I'm not allowed to use red. And that was a turn that got me nothing. So I do have to take one of these counters off the, off the staff there. So what am I going to do here? I've also got two twos, isn't it? So with, will this give me another two somewhere? Well, there's a two down there. Yes, it will. Because if I play this for... Uh, the color, remember, color allows you to go backwards to a, another color uh, of the same color, a card of the same color. So I can go backwards to a purple card down there. I take the, the feather, replace it with the card I moved, and bam, I've got three twos. That's a paradox, okay? So once again, I will discard one of the cards. Maybe I'll discard the blue ring. And look... I'm discarding just willy-nilly here, but really you have to think about which card you discard in terms of how many symbols of, of these are left out there, how many colors are left, how many numbers are left. You have to think about what card you're discarding, and I'm not at the moment. So I've discarded that. I replace it with a card from the deck, shuffle these up, and, okay, shuffle them up, and then I place them into the continuum to the left or right of my staff. So that becomes my new hand, and these go into the continuum. Okay, so I think you got a pretty good, oh, there's a depleted relic. So my continuum is not looking really helpful at the moment. It's got a depleted relic, which I can't use as a paradox, and it's got both solar flares <laughs> in it. Okay, so somehow I've got to get rid of those because there's a those are taking up space. And I would continue again. What have I got here? I formed the paradox, so the, the, the codex moves to blue. So I can't use blue. So my blue skull there is pretty useless. Um, and off we go. So I, I might leave it there. So as you can see, you travel up and down, uh, forming paradoxes or um, just organizing your movement to try and get cards you need maybe two three turns down the track you do have to plan you're not always going to get something that you want um, every single turn you're going to have to take things that you don't want in order to get things that you do want a bit later i really love that planning aspect of it sometimes it's a little bit too thinky for me when i just want to relax a little bit and roll some dice or, or flip some cards but when you do feel like a, a challenge and a puzzle I find that this game is great. It does have another variation in the solo rules called uh, Reliquary Mode, where not only do you have to get the five Paradox Crystals. Oh, I got another one. I should give myself a second one, didn't I? <laughs> I've got two. I need three more to win. But not in the relic um, Reliquary Mode. Gee, that's a hard word to say. Uh, I hope I'm saying it right. So here it says, as an additional win condition, by the end of the game, you must have collected at least one of each color, icon, and number in the reliquary. Okay, so like that. And you get, you, um, and, the, and the relics come into your reliquary um, instead of, like, you remember I discarded relics when I needed to? Well, they don't get discarded. They come into your a spot here which would would be your reliquary and um already i feel like i'm saying that word too many times so they come in here and uh you can only have a maximum of five it's it's like a holding bay but not only are you trying to get the paradoxes from the continuum here you're also trying to get a setup here as well from your discarded relics 
so that you've got at least one of each color icon and number super hard i haven't tried that yet but i'm gonna give that a try because man the game's hard enough already uh, but it's well balanced you will win from time to time but with that extra uh, reliquary mode it'll, it'll be super super tough and the other thing worth mentioning about antinomy is i've told you about the solo game but when you're playing the two-player game okay there's no extra deck of cards there or or extra counters or anything like that what happens in in the in the in the dual game is the other person has their source they're another sorcerer on the other side of the continuum going against you also trying to collect the paradoxes and the crystals and they're sliding up and down this side of the continuum with their staff and you're sliding up and up and down on this time on this side um, and you're, you're basically doing the same things unless this happens where you are both on the same spot and and when that happens a clash occurs and uh, what a clash is um, you uh, when that occurs each player tallies the numbers on their cards okay and um, whoever's got um, the yeah whoever's got the most wins the clash and you get to steal one of the crystals that the other player has already gotten so a bit of a take that um, element comes into it but the game basically plays the same but if you like that idea of a of sliding up and down the continuum and and also trying to avoid bumping into the other sorcerer for fear of losing a, a hard-earned crystal that's kind of nice as well um great game i love this game it's antinomy um i'm not sure whether it's still a, uh, uh in print on the button shy website please check it out I'm sure you can find one somewhere. See you later.